Welcome to the Blitz Box. This is one of the things from World War II. See, two people would sit here on this chair and on this chair during air raids in this part of London. So why are we in this cute little box? I'm here to show you the coolest parts of London, the parts that I love. We start our journey today on the best parts of London in this nice little park. Now, it's not always this green. You see in the winter, there's no irrigation. The water's it like there is in other parts of the world. It's this nice, massive field of just greenery though. Football pitches, there's like a cricket pitching system on the other side of the park. And then in the distance, we can see some of the tallest buildings in London. Now these buildings are part of Canary Wharf. What is Canary Wharf? Wow, there's a huge drum about Canary Wharf and it all has to do with the selling of illicit substances. See, long ago, maybe not so long ago, maybe recently ago, there were some illicit substances being sold here and you have to wash your money if you're getting it illegally. So what happened is that the people selling these illicit substances built all of these buildings here. They funded it, they sponsored it, they did all of that stuff. Turns out the customers of those people selling illicit substances were the same people who worked in those banks and stock markets there. It's insanely smart. Sell a person a product and then build a thing and have them move into it and pay rent. Go, 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 speedy runner. This is an awesome track. And then wash your money clean of it. Like their people are having the bankers wash their own dirty money. It's amazing. So that's kind of like the history of the building of Canary Wharf. This little track that we see that we're walking on here is about 400 meters in a circle. So during COVID, you could just run a lot in a circle. Now, up here, we are on the Heathrow flight pattern for landing big airplanes. You see London Heathrow lands these massive, huge, I don't know, what's that? Maybe a 747? Big airplane. Um, and they land throughout the day, but only certain times a day they fly over where we're currently at. And that's so you can kind of spread out the noise pollution over all of London. Sharing is caring. <laughs> okay, so now we're entering one of the coolest spots I think is in London. I mean, just look at this. There's nice greenery. Oh, there's a friendly doggy. Oh. So we're gonna walk through this little greenery forest. Hi, little doggy. <laughs> that little doggy, it was awesome. We're gonna climb up these stairs. So if I'm out of breath, it's because I am. Um, I've been sick for about the last month, which means I haven't been recording a lot of video. So walking and talking right now is a huge workout. So go me. So there's this little path here, and it goes all the way around this massive, whoa, this massive urban farm. So in front of us, let's see if we can see any farm animals. Yeah, I said that right. I still may be sick, but this is a farm. You see, in London, they have these things called city farms. So scattered throughout the city, there's stuff like donkeys, and a variety of different animals you can go see. I wish I knew the reason why, I don't, but I think it's really, really cool that you have these environments in, in a huge, huge city where you can just go check out some nature and chill with it. So we're gonna go find some animals to chill with. Check this out. We are in the middle of London, you guys. And these dudes are just chilling, taking a little nap in the sunbeam. Yeah, roll around, roll around. Get that dirt on you. Get dirty. Run away, run away. Dance. Dance, dance, motherfucker. Dance, dance, motherfucker. 
until the war drums play, I know a little about death. Yeah, clean yourself. You just rolled in the dirt. Weirdo. Okay, so those are the llamas. Now let's go see what other things are around here. So in some parts of the UK right now, there's baby sheep. So I'm hunting for a baby sheep because they're really cute. And it's like, it's baby sheep season. So let's go try to find a baby sheep. I don't think baby sheep live in these. But we'll try to identify which animal does. You're not a baby sheep, but you're, you're big. Hi. Are you taking a nap? Oh, I guess I had you guys zoomed in for a very long time. Sorry about that. Okay, well the goats look like they're taking a nap. Hi. Now we don't have to see a very zoomed up photo of my face. But we're still looking for animals. What is around here? So they also, um, all around the farms. Sometimes they rotate the animals. Sometimes they bring animals in if it gets too cold and they'll put them in a warm place. And I think it's cool because it gives, oh, look at this, you guys, a peacock, Pavo Royale. Hola. I'm pretty sure peacocks are Spanish. Hola. Como estas? Where are you from? Okay, let's go talk to the pretty one. Hola, peacock. Hola. How are you? You guys, a peacock in the middle of London. And like, so this guy's pretty dope. He has one lady, and then he has another lady. How do you get this hooked up? I mean, this goes to show you that you can be a nice, beautiful bird and have beautiful women around you. Oh, okay, well, I see. I see something you don't see. Check out these guys. So usually, not usually, I should say sometimes, there's baby pigs. And it looks like what they're trying to do here is generate a load of baby pigs. So here we have a giant man pig. And then here he has three women pigs with him. So you know what one man and three women pigs make? Baby! We're gonna get baby pigs soon, you guys. It's pretty cool. So if you study like agriculture, oh, hi! You want in the vlog too? Okay. Okay, it's for everybody. Hi. That squirrel is a little bit too friendly. I don't have food. I would love food. So this is a, I don't know, red pig, brand of red pig here. Over here, we have very two very animated pigs. And maybe they're younger. They were making a muddy mess, as you can see here, a little bit ago. And I have a feeling they're gonna get back into it, so we're just gonna watch them. Because you can see they've spilt their food. And I've learned by watching pigs over COVID. Yes, I became a pig watcher over COVID, because what else was there to do other than watch pigs and drink? So I, I'm good at watching pigs. They really like their food. Sometimes there's a bunch of movie companies and stuff that rent it out to make it look like a zombie field. This turns has, I've seen this here over here, turn into a cemetery before. I've seen it be part of, I think like New York City or something. Loads of stuff films here. Um, but the thing I find cool about it is like, if you're into airplanes or not, like you just hang out here, watch airplanes land, read a book. And it's kind of fun to get some green, very green nature in the middle of London. And with that, we are gonna now go find the next coolest spot that I think you should visit when you visit London. Because if it was that cool, let me show you what else next we have. Okay, so 
Our next spot of places that you have to see in London is like literally right next to the park we were just at. Now, here in the middle of the city, we see a Loch Ness colored thingy. And along the side, there's all these little cute river boats. So what is this thingy? Well, a long time ago, there used this all used to be underwater and the marshland was where the farm was, where we were at. Whoa, English, hard speaking. Um, so yeah, after that, they had to raise some of the stuff. They had to build ports and that sort of thing. Okay. So then so they could put buildings and ships here and that sort of stuff. So throughout the years, this entire area has changed shapes. And even in the last 10 years, it's kind of grown and then shrunken. Over here across from us, you can see some cranes that are set up and there's a building that looks like there's some construction work here. It's either putting up or taking down. It's really hard to tell. And then just alongside here, we have a nice peaceful, yeah. Well, okay, it's not the north, you guys. But we have a nice peaceful little water. Well, hi. You wanna be in the vlog too? Okay. All you guys wanna be in the vlog. Hi. Now these little water birds, fun fact, they don't fly. They prefer to just like run across the top of the water. And they're not very fertile. So while they mate all year round, it's only like a one in five chance that they'll get the, do ducks get pregnant? Whatever, that they'll make a baby duck. And it's like a one in five chance that the baby duck will live, which I find fascinating. And it's just that species of duck that's super, super hard for them to get pregnant. And now I'm confused if ducks get pregnant or not. How do I know this? COVID. I'm here to show you another really cool spot that I like about London. We stand in front of the London Overground Shoreditch High Street Station. Now Shoreditch is super cool for a bunch of reasons. One of them though is that they really, really like art and there's a lot of street art around here. So we're just going under the station right now and I will attempt to not get hit by a car as I show you some art. So there's some super cool advertisements. You can see us walking in front of this little green walkway that looks like it was built in the Victorian age, which is a good guess if you guess that it is. Thank you, Mr. Brunel, who built all of the trains around here during Queen Victoria's time. And check out all of this art, you guys. Look at this. Across the street, so you can see this one. So, all around here, like in the day, there's usually some art going on. I guess it is day right now, it's kind of morning. Um, and some of it's practice. There's some political statements in here. There's all sorts of different art in this area and it's super, super cool. The other things about Shoreditch that I like, great food culture. So there's a lot of like food trucks and food carts and all of that sort of stuff. And you can usually grab lunch for like under 10 pounds. Awesome. Grab breakfast for under 10 pounds. It's very cool. So as I avoid getting hit by cars, this is a cool rendition of the uh, Last Supper. Here we can see a bunch of older brick, you know, that's been restored in the Victorian architecture format. Let me see. I need a coffee, you guys. Listen, words. What up, dog? Please do not scan this QR code, you guys. 
But why do we see so much Victorian stuff around here? Like, what makes all of this Victorian architecture so eclectically wonderful? Well, I will tell you. So, back in Miss Queen Victoria's age, England, the UK, went through this entire thing on what they call the Industrial Revolution. And basically, it was a massive revamp, massive thing of tons of innovation, tons of transportation. It's when a bunch of the train systems were laid in the UK. And so, along the trains, you needed to put people in a place to stay. They needed places to buy things and that sort of stuff. And Shoreditch is really close to Liverpool Station. Now, Liverpool Station is one of the biggest train stations in London. Like, it connects to everything that you can imagine around the city. So with that, you need a bunch of infrastructure to house the workers, to house the trains, the passengers, just to house everybody. And that's why we see a bunch of this old versus new. And even though there's been a bunch of gentrification Recently, I really do like how they really try to keep the, the brick in this part of town. I'm gonna go show you more and we'll explain more. Did this all pop up? Blah, blah, blah. You may ask, did this all pop up overnight? Nope. This art has been years in the making and in the overmaking and then the overmaking. Like when you get up super close to it, you can kind of see the artwork underneath the current artwork that you're seeing. So it's always evolving. I mean, take a look at this building. It has four, does it our BR tone? We'll go zoom in. So even inside here in some of the abandoned buildings, it's all covered in art. So cool. This is pretty cool. My camera doesn't do well with extreme colors, so because this one's so dark in the light, it's not great. I'm gonna try to put a filter on that one. This one's like an entire comic book setting. So we have like a warrior over here, and we have a monster with some arrows, crashing a tree and a dude running away, going into space. Very, very cool stuff, you guys. Oh, this one's very cool. These colors are awesome. So, we've now entered Brick Lane, and Brick Lane is pretty cool, because there's stuff like this all over the place. It's more art. So let's walk around and see what else we can see around here. Okay, check this out. So there's a bunch of this um, mural from this artist that's popping up, and I really like it. It's Heroes of Palestine, and it shows just various members of the press. I'm not sure if they're actual members, but I think it's really cool that we know what's going only on what is in Palestine because of the press. So thank you, press, for being there and showing the world what's happening, and maybe one day, the rest of the world will stop being rude down there. I mean, check this out, you guys. It's just like 360 of art. Who cannot like this? Like, there's always so much cool energy around here. And this stuff changes, like, all the time. I mean, it's such an awesome area of, like, random things here. You could join a communist party. You could buy a Hummer, like everything is in this area. This little one looks really freshly done. This is cool. Oh, this is nice, showing a doctor. I like it. Well done, guys. See all sorts of stuff in this area. Okay, let's go explore a little bit more because there's a couple more things that I want to show you here. And the streets are going to start to get busy in about an hour. So let's go before there's people in my video. So, if you're into treasure hunting, there's treasures all around London, and it's really cool just to go and walk and find them. So one is right in front of us, and let's go take a look at it. So in front of us, we see this blue sign. Now these blue signs are the treasures that you're looking for. All over the city, 
These show you what used to be here a long time ago. So this place was where Sir Thomas Buxton used to live in the 18th century. And he was a huge promoter for anti-slavery. In a previous video, we learned about how Prince Albert helped out with that. Well, he didn't do it alone. He had to do it with a bunch of members of the public. And because of the stuff that Sir Buxton did, they all helped together to end slavery here in the UK way earlier than it ended in a lot of the rest of the world. So I was walking to the next destination and I saw a blue sign I haven't seen. So we're gonna go check it out. Okay, so see, blue sign. Let's go look at it. Hanbury Hall. So it was built in the 18th century as a French Huguenot church. John Wesley preached here and then it became a German Lutheran church. And then Charles Dickens gave readings here and all sorts of stuff met here. Isn't that cool, you guys? Let's see if we can look inside. The port is not beard though. That's what it looks like inside. It looks like it's been renewed a little bit. But if you go on the scavenger hunt around London and read the blue signs, you can learn so much about British history that you didn't even know was sitting here right in plain sight. Down these streets, there's also crazy cafes and shops, and it's like these change all the time, it kind of seems. So there's breweries here, lots of places to have happy hour. There's all sorts of shops too. It's like every, every other thing is a shop. So vintage clothes is massive here. And by vintage, I mean secondhand used. And there's lots of them here. You will find whatever you are looking for. Most of them are closed, because as I mentioned, it's really early in the morning, but I don't like to edit people out of my videos. So here, we see one in front of us where you can, it looks like this one's kind of 90s. Some jean jackets, some waistcoats. So yeah, that's what's around here. Um, let's go explore more. So if you're into vintage, this place is literally the best. There's loads of vendors in here. So it's like two levels, you go downstairs, you check out, whoa, we're very zoomy you can get an insight into my pores. Really, really cool stuff. Now, how do you find this place on here? You look for the broccolis. I don't understand what's about the broccolis, but everyone always takes pictures of them when I'm here. So now I will take a photo of the broccolis and show you what I'm talking about. And try not to get hit by this car. Okay, car gun. Now these are the broccolis. You guys, what's up with the broccolis? I don't understand it, but okay. Broccolis. Art is weird, don't question it. Just down another street, you can see some nice little Victorian houses. Maybe it's Art Deco, I don't know. Some brick houses. And on here we have a nice little message. Aspire to inspire others and the universe will take notice. I like that. And then up here, we see some other art some bicycles. So, we are in a new place that I think is super cool. Now it's right next to Brick Lane, right next to Shortage, so you can totally get here. We are going in the Spitalfields Market. Now this place gets really busy at lunchtime and really busy in the daytime, because around us, there's a load of tech companies, there's a load of finance companies, and basically, if you work here, you will come here, you'll get your lunch, you'll do your shopping and that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna show you around when everyone is starting to put together their booths so you can see what it is, because otherwise I'd have to record people, and that's just weird. So let's go look. Now, Pokey House is one of my most favorite restaurants in here. It literally is what it is. It's just Pokey. There are free water machines here. So pro tip, bring a water bottle and save money, save the planet. Some vendors only take cash, so make sure you either bring cash or get some cash when you're walking around. All of these garage doors, food will open up later. And then over here, you can see all of the vendors that are starting to set up.
garbage from the night before. I went the wrong way. I'm here to show you something that you must see. I used to work around this area and, oh, men in the garden. That reminds me of what we saw in Riga. What is it with mannequins and the garden and cool places, you guys? Do you have a garden? Do you have a mannequin in the garden? Okay, so the reason why we're also here is that there's toilets. So sometimes it's really hard to find a public toilet in London and there's one here. So whenever you're planning your trip here, make sure that you have stops where there's toilets. This one here is pretty good. Crosstown Donuts, also highly recommended because they sell good food. Over here, you can see a different type of vendor. So a bunch of clothes are here and jewelry and you know, all sorts of that sort of thing. I kind of like this when it's empty. It's way more chill, quiet. But if you're into markets and buying stuff, this place has everything. So if you have someone's birthday, if you have someone's whatever day, this place. If it's your birthday, this place. Okay, so we're walking to the next destination that I'm gonna take you guys to. But check this out, this is how they kept the Victorian facades of a lot of the buildings in front of us. So this one has currently been restored, but check it out. You see a building in front of a building. How cool is that? So we're gonna keep walking down this little street and soon you will see where we're going. Oh, hey, that one looks like some delicious food. Delicious, ooh, check out these delicious foods, you guys. Ooh, if I were into delicious food like that, I'd totally eat there. But I will make a plan for when I will eat later because I'm certain I will be hungry and I do need coffee. So we're on a quest for hunger and caffeine. Hey guys, thanks for watching the top things I love to see in London. Hope you like it. Come here, drop a comment if you do, and I'm gonna leave you with some really good vibes from the ceiling here. Check this out. Do good things. Ciao.